today do I have a treat for you. This is going to be my very first cookout for the summer. But guess what? We're going to serve it up on Sunday dinner. Yes, we are. And you're going to love what I have on the menu for today. We're serving up some barbecue. We're going to do it outside on the grill, on a charcoal grill. And you're going to love what we're having. So come on, let me show you what we're having. I'm not going to tell you right now. I want to show you what we're having. So with that in mind, let's get started. Okay, so this is what we're serving for Sunday dinner. Remember, we're doing a cookout now, so we got to go all out. Now, I've already pre-cleaned my meat, because you know I'm going to do it like that. This is my chicken. I cleaned it last night. That's my chicken wings we're going to cook. I think we're going to do a few on the grill, and maybe we're going to deep fry some. Because I created this sauce not too long ago using this Panda Express Sweet Chili Sauce. And it's called Sweet Hawaiian. It kind of reminds me of Hawaii, which is my dream vacation I'm going to go to one day. I'm going to go there one day. But we're going to make a Sweet Hawaiian chicken wing. We're going to do some chicken wings. And we put this over to the side. And here goes the main course. You know, we, this is the main course for us meat wise. Are you looking at them ribs? Now, on this particular slab of ribs, I only have onion powder black pepper, and a pinch of garlic. Now let me tell you this, anytime that you're trying to marinate meat or you want to tenderize your meat, I always tell you the first thing to reach for is this onion powder. This will break down your meat and tenderize it better than the meat tenderizer that has sodium in it. This is what you want to reach for first. You put this on your meat and proceed with your other seasoning. You tell about something good. Now, the barbecue seasoning that I use, I have three slabs of ribs up under all of this. These ribs are kind of small. I don't know what's going on with, with, with ribs right now. But I use the Master Piece by KC barbecue seasoning. Underneath here, which you can't see it right now. You're going to see it when I take it to the grill. Well, there we go. Look at that. That's another rib that I did. And first, I layered it with some onion powder. I did a little bit of the black pepper, a pinch of garlic, just a little bit, because garlic would go a long way. And then what you see on top is that KC Masterpiece Barbecue Seasoning. Underneath this layer rib, rib, I have one more at the very bottom. See, this is how you pretty much save your pans. You don't have to use all these pans, put one rib at the bottom, put some aluminum foil, so I did that one pretty much the same way, but each rib is going to be different. This rib may just be a uh, plain rib. This other one may be like the barbecue sauce, and we're going to do something else with that. Also, for my barbecue sauce with a couple of other ingredients, we're going to use this KFC Masterpiece Barbecue Sauce. I, you know what? You know what? Yeah, I know I'm thinking about some chicken, right? Because I thought about the chicken up there. That's why I say KFC. But it's the KC Masterpiece Barbecue Sauce. And I buy this from Sam. You have two joint together um, that comes together for about $5 when I buy it from Sam's. And if you can't find that, Sam, go to your, your favorite grocery store. They have it. It's really good. Now for our baked beans, you know you got to have baked beans for a cookout. We're going to use the Bush Baked Beans. This is the best kind to use from a can the bush country style baked bean. We're gonna put some hot dogs, we're gonna do some hot dogs on the grill, as well as incorporate some fried bacon. Now I cooked this last night to get that out the way. I want to do that. And it looks real crispy because you want it to be crispy because once you incorporate it into your baked beans, which is optional, you don't have to put it in your baked beans, so don't put it whatever you like in your baked beans, but we're gonna add some bacon, some grilled hot dogs, and some brown sugar. Now, on occasion, I will use my recipe with the Coca-Cola inside the baked bean. But since we're doing the bacon with the natural sodium inside of it, because what I did, I just rinsed this bacon off and fried it. I didn't boil it. I fried this so, because I want some of that, a little bit more of that sodium on this in order for that, that um, flavor to kick off and be balanced with the sugar. We're going to do some coleslaw. And we're gonna, I really have an idea, like I said, I wanna do my banana sweet potato pie. 
that's the key that's what i want to do but y'all i can only do so much for right now but first thing we're gonna do is go out here to this grill because i cleaned it let's go outside we're gonna go outside we'll talk a little bit more when we get outside now you know two years ago i redid my grill but i haven't been really taking good care of it i've been leaving it outside allowing the weather to do whatever it wanted to do to it so i'm gonna have to redo it pretty soon but the other day i came outside and i washed it down really well you know i cleaned out the inside as well right okay so this is how it's looking right now we got to prep this before we can bring the meat outside to cook it now i had some people come on here and tell me well son it's not no smoker when i purchased purchased this nine years ago they said it's a smoker and it's a charcoal real cooker now i'm gonna show you how i'm, I'm, I'm gonna smoke it because this time we're gonna make it so tender the bones may be sitting on the racks or into the fire we're gonna do it there's a fly on there walking on it it was at first okay so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna smoke our meat it's gonna be so tender the bones may be at the bottom opposed to inside the meat that's how good it's gonna be now a lot of people wondering how are you gonna smoke it it's not no smoker well like i stated when i bought it they told me i can smoke meat on here as well as charcoal grilled meat on here i'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it i'm gonna take this aluminum pan and i may have to bend it because it's a little bit too big which is good because it's gonna preserve the heat I'm bring it up just like that because I want all my heat to come upward. So I'm bending my pan upward in an upward motion. It comes flatter, but we're gonna bend it up. So inside of here, we're gonna fill that completely with charcoal. Okay, so here's some of my charcoal. But to make sure that I get a good fire, I'm gonna take a little bit of the paper and line it. And if you're wondering why I'm lining, lining the, the pan, it's because once I place the charcoal on top of this and ignite it with some lighter fluid, you want it to have something to catch on to so you can get a really, really good fire. Now we're going to take this and dump all of that in there. Is that enough for what I'm trying to do? No. So I'm going to add some more charcoal. This is the only side that would have charcoal inside of it. Now, a lot of people don't like buying this King, Kingsford charcoal because you have to put lighter fluid on it. It's not that hard, people. Go ahead and just buy you some Kingsford charcoal. This is the odorless kind. It doesn't have a smell to it. You're going to saturate that kind of well. Okay, Sonia, how much you putting on here? Probably about... Three fourths of a cup to a half a cup. That's how much I just placed on there. I'm gonna allow that to sit for about a good five minutes. If you have not pre -marin uh, marinated your meat, go in the house, do that, and you come back once you finish cleaning your meat and seasoning your meat, and then you come back and light it. So that way you know you have waited enough time in order to light that. But as you can see, this is the only side that we're gonna put the charcoal on. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is take these two pans, we're gonna put it at the very bottom. Although we're not gonna have any charcoal at the very bottom, you wanna put two pans as your drip pan because once that meat starts smoking, it's gonna start dripping the juice from the meat. So you don't wanna have your grill all messed up. So if you can, go buy two of these aluminum pans. Some extra pans is always good to have around the house and they only cost $1. So we're going to place that at the bottom. And now that we know that my meat is already pre-seasoned, it's ready to come on out here and start doing what it do because it's hot as hell out here. I'm going inside to get my tent. As you can see, the, the, the patio is kind of junky. I got a lot of stuff going on. I'm going to redo this table later. later. That's the grill that I got from my neighbor. I'm going to redo that. But right now, I know what you're saying. Sonya, it's all about this meat you're trying to cook for Sunday dinner. So you're right. You're right. So now I'm going to go ahead and light my charcoal so we can get this started because I'm ready. I'm, my mouth is getting watery. I'm going to put my racks back in because this is what my meat going to go on. Make sure they clean people. I hear a lot of people saying, well, you know what? I'm not going to clean the rack because once you um, start the grill up for another cookout, all that going to burn off. 
It's not gonna burn off. Clean them, clean, clean your rats before you put some meat on your rats, and especially if you're talking about inviting somebody over your house. Don't do that. You do that when you at home by yourself, okay? All right, so I'm going inside, get meat, bring it back outside. We're gonna see how it looks. But first, gotta light this fire. Okay, let's go ahead and start this fire. Make sure you get some matches. I just try to come out here with a piece of paper. I almost burnt my damn hand. I don't know why I do that. See how that fire's catching? Let it marinate. Let the lighter floor fluid marinate on the charcoal for a minute, and you got a good fire. You ain't got to keep buying that key, uh, what's that, match light or whatever it is, because it has the same thing on it, lighter fluid. And see, what you want it to do is allow it to burn, and it's going to burn itself out and begin to smoke. That's when you know it's ready. And see, with a situation like this, since we don't have any fire directly on our food on this side, we can go ahead and put our meat on if you want to. Get it about a good two minutes, and I'm gonna get the meat and put up a tent because it's hot. It is hot in Georgia. You know, anytime you see some cows sitting on a tree, it's hot outside. It's hot as hell. Look, you see how tender that meat is? So that's why I say it may just fall off the bone. That onion powder, onion powder, will tenderize your meat like no other. Got a little, little bit full, and we don't want to have it. Put it down close to the end without touching the wall. Okay. I'm going to open up my second layer. Look at there. Do you see that? That's what you want, people. Look. If you see me hit something, that's the bone. But in between there, look. Look how that's going in there. Look. No force. I'm not forcing it. Going to lift that up. It's our second slab. We're going to place this. Let's go this way because we got another piece that's going to face it. I'm going to hurry because these flies are going to sniff of my meat. And we can't share this. We're going to take this last piece and place it a little bit on top of that rib. If it marinates a little bit on there, that's fine. I just don't want it completely touching the barrels of the, of the grill. And guess what? We're going to close it. We're going to set it and forget it and let it cook for a few hours and come back and take a look at it. And that's what you call slow cooking and barbecuing at its best. We're gonna slow cook this for a while. We're gonna come on back. You see that smoke coming up out of there? Everybody in the neighborhood gonna smell all this goodness. Okay, y'all, I got the tent up. Send it out in the backyard. I'm just gonna sit back here and relax look at a couple of movies on my laptop, listen to a little music, and watch, just, just to keep an eye on the meat or whatever. But I wanted to sit back here and just really relax because I haven't been outside in a while. So I'll be taking in some movies. I wanted to play some music, which I brought, brought my, I always bring my sound bar outside and hook it up to the, to the laptop and set it off and it gives like a surround sound, nice sound. But let's go ahead and check, it, check out the meat right quick before I sit down to relax a little while. Okay, let's go ahead and check on our ribs. Do you see how that meat's cooking? It's smoking the meat. All the juices is sitting on top. Can you zoom in a little bit so they can see the juice sitting on top of that meat? It's cooking real slow. Now I know I've done I have done a tutorial showing how to cook ribs, but here's another way. If you have a, a grill that has a barrel on the side of it, you can use that barrel as your smoker. But like I said, just line it with the two pans so it can catch the juice. It's cooking pretty good. Let's check on our charcoal and make sure everything is going well with the charcoal. Hot. Extremely hot. I'm going to go ahead and close that up because I want to get my heat. meal for our Sunday dinner. Now you know I got your plate to go as you can see so you better come on over and get it. So I hope you have enjoyed the time we've shared together. Until next time, be blessed.